All right, my beautiful friends, here we are together again at last. I missed all of you. That's the truth. So uh, here we are. It is Sunday, July 5th, 2020. This is my newest segment of Markets, A Look Ahead. I hope you all had a great weekend, a nice 4th of July. But you know what? I know it's Sunday, but it's time to get back to work so we can focus on... <laughs> Focus on what's coming here uh, down the pike, at least short term. I mean, that's what these uh, videos are all about. Before I talk about that, where I think stocks or this market is going to go uh, this week, let's talk about what's happening right now. Tension between China and the United States is rising. There is virtually nothing you hear nothing about the US China trade deal again because it's dead there's never been a deal um and right now there is no path to a deal uh, even though you know it was uh, touted as being historic in my view it was historic failure uh, which is very sad because the president did have it right we do need fair trade with regard to China They've been walking all over us for a very long time. Uh, China's making deals with people all over the countries, all around the world. But with regard to the United States, uh, sadly, they've turned the administration into a bunch of puppets who are just following along. And it's um, it doesn't look good for the United States. That's the truth. We're in dire shape. I mean, our country could not be in worse shape than it is right now. But you wouldn't know that by looking at the stock market, being that the NASDAQ just hit another record high. However, comma, we know where this is coming from. I explained to you a couple of weeks ago that it would play out like this and why I told you specifically that the Wall Street banks, the investment banks are buying the market. They're, they're buying the market. So are the big hedge funds who all have a main line to the Federal Reserve and access to unlimited capital. Unlimited. So they're going to buy the market. That's what they're doing here. However, that does not mean that this rising intention, tensions with regard to U.S. Uh, and China trade or whatever's going on is, is not going to weigh on it. We just sent two aircraft carriers, the Nimitz and the Ronald Reagan, over to the disputed waters in China. This happened over the weekend. This uh, this has the potential to weigh on the market. There is no doubt about it. But again, this is the environment we are in. I don't know. Maybe their grand plan, honestly, is to bring us to some kind of a conflict. Um, that's what really tends to bring uh, nations out of a depression for which we are in one is they engineer war. Okay, it's very simple to do this. The programs or the mainstream media, you know, they program your brain uh, and they distract you. Look here, don't look here, pay attention to this. Oh, forget about looking over there. You know, that's, that's how they work. And I, I believe sincerely that you all are well aware of that. But anyway, with regard to the uh, issues with the United States and China, they could not, in my view, they could not look worse than they are. We are clearly in a Cold War with China right now. Um, China is uh, holding all the cards with regard to uh, trade or getting a trade deal. That This should be very obvious to everyone. Um, and that's kind of sad in a way. I really hoped or hope that the president uh, changes his strategy with regard to China, what he's doing now is not working. The definition of insanity, or so people, some people say, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Well, something's got to change here. Um, and the president is surrounded by morons of the highest order. Um, he picked them, granted, but he's getting bad advice from people. And I think we know who they are. I mean, Larry Kudlow, Peter Navarro. Um, these are just a couple of the things uh, that are out there right now uh, trying to uh, advise the president, trying to spread lies uh, as well here. Anyway, look, that's the situation. But let's, look, let's talk about a few other things. There's a tell here. There's a big tell 
in this right now actually that could point towards gains in this market despite the fact gains this week despite the fact that we're sending two aircraft carriers over there uh, and tensions are rising now where is that tell it's in cryptocurrency cryptocurrency in my view reacts kind of like a risk off uh, environment or a risk on environment what am I talking about for example right now cryptocurrencies are under pressure a little bit uh, Bitcoin is still over 9,000 okay but when you have cash coming out there's a little cash coming out of the big cryptos right now where's it going it's gonna look to go somewhere you understand so in my view uh, it's going to probably go into the stock market. I don't think it's going to go into metals here because, again, metals and cryptocurrencies kind of react the same way lately. They're really a safety trade in many ways. So when you see cryptos doing what they're doing right now, bleeding off, this could be a tell that ca more cash is going to make its way into the stock market. You understand? Very, very simple to to gain a perspective on that now let's look at something else here that's a tell that stocks are probably going up let's look at crude oil crude oil is now over forty dollars a barrel it has no business being here you understand that well we're apparently in a pandemic and everything is shut down but uh crude oil keeps going up we understand where this is coming from too it's a mechanism uh, to boost energy, to boost the financial sector, period, the end. So crude oil, in my view, being that it's massively overvalued, will continue to be massively overvalued, and I would not be surprised to see crude oil climb here. Um, and then, of course, the biggest tell of them all, all, um, and this is kind of in the moment, is the 10-year yield, which is 0 0.67. Now, again, you know what to do here. It could not be more simple. Let me ask you. If if tomorrow the 10-year yield goes up to 0 0.7, 0 0.71, 0 0.72, what do you think is going to happen to the stock market? How about this? If the 10-year yield remains under pressure or drops from where it is, where do you think stocks are going to go? It's so easy. But again, just looking at a few things here, we could get a handle on where things may go tomorrow. We can actually kind of try at least to look into the future. If cryptos are under pressure here, that cash has got to go somewhere. It's my fluidity of money theory. You understand? Cash, cash never goes to money heaven. You understand? It just goes into other assets. Um, could make its way into crude oil. More than likely, when you have an environment like this, where we just got another record high for the NASDAQ. You know, people get all euphoric and giddy. <laughs> so what do they do? Oh, let's put some work cash to work in the stock market. Let's inflate it bigger than it is right now. You know, but according to people like Steve Mnuchin, the, the market's fairly valued. You know that, right? Because it's coming out of his pie hole and Kudlow. Oh, there's, there's no bubble. You do realize that Larry Kudlow, okay, completely missed the last bubble as the market was melting down right at the at the time the market was melting down Larry Kudlow said oh no no this is all going to get normal there's no bubbles anywhere Th this is the truth look it up for yourself and this is the guy who's advising the president on economic policy you got to be kidding me but this is again the clown show that we have here in the United States nothing makes sense it's complete chaos um and in my view, I can't see a way out. Um, I really I really can't. I'll, you know what needs to happen? Let me explain this to you real quick. We need to get rid of every single representative that we have from the president through Congress. You get rid of all of them. Every single one. And then replace them with, you know who? A member of the middle class, whatever's left of it. Because all we got is these elitists, okay, from the president all through Congress. They're all multimillionaires, okay? That's not the way our founding fathers wanted this to work. They wanted like an average guy or an average girl, back then it was all men, to get in there and, you know, to, so they can relate to the average person. You understand? But not today. In today's twisted environment, and this is why I mean 
I mean, let's, you know, under the last two presidents, starting with Obama and to this guy, we've seen a, a complete destruction of the middle class. Let me ask you, if we had a member of the middle class as a representative of our country, uh, from the president through Congress, do you think the middle class would be in the boat they're in now? Absolutely not. we got to get rid of the elitists there. That's the truth. All they are for, and no one is a, no one is better at this than the president of the United States, making sure the rich get richer. And it happened under Obama too. These last two presidents have done some kind of a twisted, disgusting, and hideous thing to our country. Um, and the Federal Reserve has been applying all the cash needed to get the job done to kill the middle class. I mean, this is obviously a bigger picture. It's going back to the takeover, the new world order, the new America. That's where we're going. How, for how many years have I warned you? I've said if you are a member of the middle class, you are in a lot of trouble. And I can't stress that any more than right now. Um, it's the truth. Um, the middle class here in America is under attack every single day. And uh, it's not going to stop. It's only going to get much worse until they achieve their goal, which is extreme haves and extreme have-nots. Middle class vanished, extinct, going into history. Anyway, look, I, I could go on and on about all this and... Um, I kind of run off at the mouth from time to time. But let's do this real quick. All right. Right now, it looks like there's a, tell, there's a couple of tells in this market. We got cryptos under a little bit of pressure right now. We got crude oil over $40 a barrel. Both of these are stock market positive in my view. You must, 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 must underline, keep your eye on that 10-year yield. It's the most important thing. Again, for how many years have you heard me say, forget the stock market, you know, where well, you got all the the brain dead mental midgets out here looking at the Dow, 30 companies, what are they doing? You know, forget about looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. First of all, you should be looking at the, the broader index, which is the S&P 500, okay? If you want to look at anything, you want to look at the S&P 500, but then before that, you want to look at the 10-year yield, because the 10-year yield is going to tell you where the market is going. Period, the end, I got to stop talking. Do you know why? Let me tell you. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. <laughs> I bought a nitrous oxide system for my 68 Camaro Supersport. Started putting it in, and I'm going to finish it today. Yeah, so right after this video, Rick's going to change out of this shirt and kind of put a ragged shirt on and go finish my nitrous oxide setup. And when I do that, when it's done, maybe next week, I'll do a nice video for you gearheads out here. I hope you enjoy that. All right, look, this guy right here loves you a lot. That's the truth. Please ponder these things I've spoke about here in this video. Share the video, get it out there, and I will, I will see you tomorrow.